later people keep asking everywhere why you don't bring back a old time reminder i said it's a good idea without a doubt but what the hell you want me to sing about is danny declare sing about the price of food 639 in trinidad and tobago so let's shift from education to agriculture uh, because we're joined now by the former head of the farmers union shiraz khan to discuss uh, the upcoming budget which is scheduled for september the 26th what you'd like to see done for the agricultural sector we'll also discuss the ongoing challenges of predia larceny how the agri forum is expected to assist local farmers there's apparently going to be one next year as well we heard from the agriculture minister talking about that and also how the government subvention will assist when we talk about the, the continuing concerns about food security. Sharaz, thanks very much uh, for taking the time to be with us. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning to Fazir, to your viewers and your listeners. Thank you for having me this morning. Sounds like you're battling with the cold uh, this morning, Sharaz. Hopefully, uh, it's, it's nothing uh, more serious uh, than the flu. But thanks very much uh, for taking the time to be with us. Let, let, let's, let's put in context. Uh, I, again, because, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a routine. We come up towards a budget. Every, we want to hear from all the different sectors as to what they're looking forward to the budget. We hear the same old, same old. Then we hear the same old, same old complaints afterwards. And we rinse and repeat and do the same thing next year. What is your anticipation ahead of the budget presentation with all of this apparent focus on agriculture and food security now? Well, Fazir, as you know, there, there are problems that um, that created or from the outside that created our difficulty in Trinidad and Tobago. One, it had the global warming and you see, um, you're seeing it going to escalate all over the world. And I do think Trinidad and Tobago have had a discussion about how we're going to deal with some of the global problems um, climate change and how we're going to um, mitigate it for not only the farmers but for the citizens of this country. I can't recall any serious discussion taking place to do that. And then you had the issue of the pandemic, and then you also have the issue of the Ukraine war that that causing all of these shortages of greens and and and, and vegetables and all the other things. But thinking about all of that, how have we, as a country, apart from having an expo? How have we dealt with in terms of increasing production, catering for the shortages that we are facing, catering for the, the problems that we have in terms of the constant increase of freight prices, um, uh, fear, um, duties and all of that? How do we, how, how do, what discussion are we having on those issues? And, and therefore, uh, uh, in relation to that, uh, the, what, what will give you hope that, that there's something different because uh, again people place a lot of emphasis on a budget i don't know why because when you look at the implementation a lot of what is said is never implemented but in any yeah. event if you were to hear something from the finance minister on the 26th that might open your eyes with surprise that they were okay they're really serious this time what what would that be what would you like to hear uh, right now, the Pedia Larceny squad is grounded, and, and, and Larceny and Pedia Larceny, which is basically stealing, has escalated. It is all over the place. You complain about your avocados, your zabuka. Everybody looked, looked just about two weeks ago, right in front of me, my fa fa the farmer opposite me, lost two big bulls. Two big bulls. Saturday morning, one today. Now, how could two bulls be transported from Carsonfield? To any other location with nobody seeing that. How, what, what are we putting in place? We have begged them to put cameras at the main entrance and the exits in Castlefield. So you must locate something happening. That has not been done. All over the country there's um there, there's cameras, but it's not working. How do how how these simple little things help the farmer and the citizens? And and therefore, uh, what are we talking about as far as really developing a proper predia larceny, whether it's a squad or a response team, because even with the best will in the world, Shiraz Khan, you will never have a predia larceny unit that is sizable enough to deal with all the areas. Because as you mentioned, Castlefield, I could mention the Arangues area, where my nephew, my nephew, all his sweet peppers were, were wiped out uh, a couple of yeah. weeks ago. His neighbor's celery cleaned out completely. So, so, so all, all of that is gone. And it just seems to happen every, every time it's about, time. The, well, the, the thief know better than you 
when your your yeah. your your, pro your produce is, r is ripening and ready for harvest and harvest, and, yeah. and and therefore uh, beyond a pretty last new squad per se w what else can be done to deal with that well well there are a number of things small things that we can do in terms of having a situation where all the abattoirs and them working properly in Trinidad and Tobago so animals are not being slaughtered privately and on the roadside that everything has to go. This is that WTO decision taken 20 years ago. And we, there's only one abattoir working in Trinidad and Tobago, which is the Port of Spain abattoir. All the other abattoirs have been shut down. So there's a number of little things that was created over the years by neglect, 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 has come to be a pandemic now in Trinidad and Tobago. We got to have that system back in place so that we could get, his, get the abattoirs working that nobody for sale to sale to the public or in supermarkets or in the, market, the, the, the regional markets. It have to go through a system where it gets certification and inspection done so that this could be taken place. There are situations where you are distributing and other places that have the, the units that, that they could use on an abattoir. We need to get these things taken place. We need to understand something that people, when once the farmers are, are registered, now you now have a system of traceability, right? In terms of where you're producing what and have proper record. So you can have a man who don't have a record of planting a, a, a 10 acres of sweet potato coming to sell sweet potato in the markets. But, 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 but you, you talk that about that, Sharaskan, in, in, in the bigger market, like central market and so on. But what about yes. those roadside markets that sell stolen produce? I am, well, I don't well, buy Zabuka. I am not going to buy Zabuka. Because, but I am sure if I go to buy Zabuka anywhere in Sawa or Rangwes, I probably buy, buy my own. own. Well, that, that's how it is. And uh, that, that, that is it. That is it. But if you allow something to be festered into a, a disease, then it will be affecting the whole country. Right? If it is that you cannot put small things in place in terms of protecting, because let me tell you something for zero. When the PDR last night squad was put in place, we had a good system going. And eventually we lose a number of officers, more than 80 to 100, that went into the police service itself. Right? And then you and then you, you end up with a manpower resource, and then you have you, you, you have a situation where they were not treated properly, given the right amenities and, and, and um, resources to perform their duty, and they continue to leave the, they leave the, the Peter Lassen unit. I am not saying that they didn't have problems then, 14 years ago, you understand? But they, it was, if it was dealt with and, and understand that, okay, there are simple little things that we can do to make the situation better in terms of policing, in terms of the Peter Lassen squad, then that would have been all right. But take, for instance, what happened last week, Sunday. When they went to the Peter Larson squad, because they shut down, they just only have officers there, they're not taking anything. You go to the Freeport police station to report it. Freeport police station send it to Shogwanas. Shogwanas send it back to Freeport, which eventually took the report. But that is how they treat the people, and they do, and, 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 and that is but, something But, but just on that point, Sharaskan, sorry, sorry yes. for interrupting you. Sorry to, but I, I, I yeah. we keep hearing from the police that they could go to any station to make a report. Wow. And, and, and that they will address it, even if they have to pass it on to another station, they will take the report. Yeah, but I see, and I'm raising that with you so you can raise it when you meet with the police on next week, or the earlier this week. No, I think it was yesterday you had that. Yes. Fazi, Fazi, when will that stop? Because I can remember more than 25 years sitting down with the senior soup in the Shagwana station talking that he put up a KIV, he called his sergeant and them and said, look, I need a to deal with it this way. And up to now, we can't get it done. Because you're telling me, Fazir, you, you have a situation where you have a report to make and you are thrown from Shogwana's to Freeport. Wallahi, I'm telling you what, 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 what happened with the farmers. I swear, Almighty Allah, that is what happened. And it will continue to happen because it continues. Well, but the only, the reason, I told you that, Shur, the only reason I told you that, Shiraz Khan, because I know that as a fact, uh, be yeah. Because for, on a couple of occasions, just within the last week, I am aware of individuals who went to make a report at one station and they tell them, no, you have to go somewhere else. So when the police yeah. comes, and, and, and I didn't have the chance to bring it up with, uh, with uh, uh, Ansel Ford yesterday, but when did they tell us about this one-stop shot, they're talking nonsense. Because that ain't yeah. true at all, at all, at all. But, but let's move along with our discussion because we seem yeah. to be comfortable with either lying Franco men 
or just saying things that they know are not true and getting away with it. But this is Trinidad and Tobago. But yeah. uh, th there's a discussion about some government subvention, some subvention that is going to come to assist the farming community, the agriculture sector. Uh, what do you know about this? Well, Fazir, so, um, in 2021 20, 20, to 2022, there was a subvention of $500, $300 million to assist with special projects and um, outstanding things that need to be done in agriculture. What has happened with that $300 million? We don't know. The year before that, it had $500 million. We understand that most of the money have gone back to the Treasury. This is what happening because if it is that it have people in the Ministry of Agriculture knowing that there's deficiencies within the sector, knowing that there are problems with, 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 with waterways and all of that, you have the equipment put on, brand new equipment put on in Centennial. Why it is that you, you have the period last needs for shorter resources? How it is that you allow that $500 million or if it gone, where it gone? It came for agriculture. Then you have this $300 million this year that come. How it is, where that money went, I, 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 these are the questions we need to ask. These are the questions we need you to ask them when they're interviewing because we would, would not be there when you're doing your interviews. We cannot be there because we, we, we don't get invited again to anything like budget discussion or budget debates. How it is that you could have something like 500 million last year, last, last time oh, but, around. But, but Charles, can, before, we, before 20, we go, I'm just reminded 20, by some of my colleagues, two, weren't you part of a, and, if, sorry to interrupt you, but weren't you part of a committee uh, that, uh, that at some time ago to, 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 to get engaged and get involved? Weren't you part of that committee? Fazio, and we had a discussion already since the first meeting we had for five hours. And up to now, we haven't had a minutes at our meeting and not had any next discussion took place. Fazir, all, the, all that was said there and then. Up to now, we never had, a, had the, re, the minutes of the, the or another meeting. That is the reality of the situation. It was only my, as I, as I said before, it was only my, my appointment to the committee was made public. Right? So if it is that up to now, you have six, seven weeks going almost two months, and nothing happened, with the, nothing happened with our committee. So I am wondering what it was, what it was called for, what it was made public for. Now, if it is that you have a, a situation where in Trinidad and Tobago right now, and Fazi, let me tell you something. People will say, oh, we want so much. If we don't have some form of protectionism, we're going to have a major problem with this country for food in a little while from now. We continue to have it. We need to put emphasis and interest on how we're going to protect. And it comes from the, 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 the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Trade, getting together and saying, look, we're supposed to have data. We boast about all the data we have. We know who the criminal is, but we can't catch them. We know who the gang leaders, but we can't catch them. We have data of how much is imported and how much is not imported and how much is being consumed. Why it is that we continue to import things that we produce in Trinidad and Tobago? Why it is that we continue to put the farmers? Because sometimes when you see tomatoes selling very cheap on the market is because there's an, a large quantity of tomatoes that comes into the country and flood the market because it's running stale on it. And, and, and we had a problem. In why it is that the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Agriculture cannot work together and said, look, if it is that we consume 100,000 tons of tomatoes for the year in Trinidad and Tobago, the farmers of Trinidad and Tobago could produce 80% of that. Why it is that we only allow 20% to come in, but now we are we, we importing the 80% that, that the, 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 we the farmers producing. And we are left with a little 20 percent these are the things that we want to hear coming out of the budget not not what we're going to do and what we're not going to do that will benefit the citizens this has nothing to do with we the farmers being greedy because that is a whole bag of wash right we got to understand something that if you don't put things in place to assist the citizens to benefit from what is being produced in trinidad and tobago let us do it. But the thing about it is that we have not had anything coming from the Minister, Ministry of Trade as what it is that we are producing. And we, are, we have this amount cons uh, it to come in. And we're going to put a, a, a limit on what is coming in. Okay, but, but Charles Khan, can I, uh, going back to this thing with this advisory board that you were supposed to be part of. I'm I looking right now at, a, at an image where you're hugging up the agriculture minister, uh, Idol Adha, you know, like a Muslim well, brother is, and all that kind of thing. Haven't you reached out to him to say, what really going on? 
we I text him and you know as a Muslim brother on E day that is that is normal that we embrace one another and 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 share the greetings of Eid. So that has nothing to do with the politics. That is because it was Eid and the and when after the Salat is finished, right? But uh, brother Fazir is that we embrace each other and give the greetings. So that has nothing to do with the advisory committee or anything else. No, that but no, just, what, 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 uh, what uh, I'm trying to say greeting. is that. But the thing I mean, about it is that, yes, we suppose. I text him recently and asked for the minutes. I text Avina Singh and asked for the minutes and see where we're going next. And I was told that the minutes is being prepared and we will have a meeting soon. I did that. I, when when I, is I, soon? I, I when and, and when is soon? Uh, the, the, soon but, could, but, be, could be next week. Soon could be next year. And is that comfort for a fool? Soon is that comfort for a fool? Well, I, I mean, so, I, so, I, in, so, I in other, so, so basically, either, right? so, 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 but, so, but for Zero, the problem you have here is, is while the focus was on me, the situation in the country d demands serious and urgent um, implications to benefit the citizens, not benefit the farmer. I have the cold. You know why? Because I was cutting grass in the rain on Sunday to feed my animals. And the rain come down while I was going at it and the grass cutting nice. I just continue and I end up with this. These are some of the sacrifices we make for all, because I'm not complaining, I am doing it. But let me tell you something, at the end of the day, all people want to do is to get something on their table. And if we don't put things in place and come in with, with, with our budget, I am saying that if the budget don't come five times what it have and we have a serious, uh, let me tell you something for you. If you have the Ministry of Agriculture, not serious, you could give them 10 times what it have in the budget from what for the last 10 years. And I don't think we will go anyway on the Ministry of Agriculture that is serious about providing food for this country and doing their job at the end of the day. Sure, as you understand? We, we want to thank you very much indeed uh, for taking the time uh, to be with us. Hopefully you'll feel better soon uh, to continue uh, uh, working the land and taking care of your animals uh, as well. But uh, it, it is a major it concern. Don't me, it, don't, it don't stop me for zero. <laughs> it it, it is a major concern for us in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the broader issues related to food security with all that is going on globally. Uh, let, let's wait and see if there'll be anything meaningful coming forward in the budget presentation and if any of that is actually transferred into reality, which is another concern. But we thank you as uh, always for taking the time to be Thank you us. very much. You're thank more than welcome. Sure as can uh, with us this morning. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 it slipped my mind completely that he was a member of this advisory board. And, and I mean, it, it, it just goes... It just goes to show how shameless these people are. That they will talk about this, announce this, have a, say we're going to have a meeting. Then you have the meeting, you don't have no follow-up, you don't tell nobody nothing, and you get away with it. And you keep getting away with it. And you're always getting away with it. Because we, this is really a jokey country. Where, where, where nobody's really held to In fact, we, we are deprived of, of, of the, the means and the wherewithal to really hold these people to account because you have a bunch of apologists blocking for them, including people in the media. But anyway, we have, we have the news coming up at the, at the top of the hour. But I mean, it's just so blatant that you, you, you do these things with absolutely no intention of, of, of doing anything about it because you know you're going to get away with it. We have the news coming up. Bam, 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 bam.